Perhaps this doesn't make sense, but I love live coding because it shows me what I don't know. During a recent stream, I tried to use the reduce array method and I realized that I needed a refresher. So I took some time to break it down for myself and I wanted to share that with you. So in this video, I'll show you everything you need to know about the reduce method, why you might want to use it, and give you some practical real life examples from a simple reduce that adds numbers together to a much more complex reduce that groups items into an object. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. To allow us to focus on the reduce method today, I'm going to use a VS Code extension called Quokka, and they're actually the sponsor of this video. They gave me two licenses to give away, and if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can win. Now, Quokka itself is a super powerful tool. You can do everything from just logging uh, console logs directly in your JavaScript file to live comments to actual uh, installing node modules directly in your JavaScript file, even if you haven't added them to your package.json yet. There's a bunch of really cool stuff you can do. The licenses they gave me to give away are these $55 value personal pro licenses. And in fact, when they heard what I was going to do with the giveaway, they gave me two more. So I've actually got four licenses to give away. Now, while Coco could do lots of amazing things, today I'm going to use it just to preview console logs directly in our JavaScript file to kind of speed us up. All right, let's jump into using the reduce method. The way that I helped refresh myself about Reduce was to think about it more like a map or a filter with superpowers. So for instance, I would come in here and let's do something like add nums. All right, so we're going to add these numbers up together. And normally if this would be like a, a map, I would just come in here and say map, and then maybe take a number and say number plus one or something like that. All right, well, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm looping through each item in this array. And for each item, I'm doing one thing. And at the end, I'm going to get an array. Now, here's the superpowers that Reduce gives you. Number one, with Reduce, not only do you get access to the thing you're looping through, but you also get access to the accumulated value up to that point. So let's uh, let's get rid of this right here. And what I would get in here is the accumulated value and then whatever the thing I'm looping through. All right, looping through. In this case, it would be a number. So maybe I just call this num, something like that. And this is, again, an arrow function, just like it would be with a map. And you can make this a separate function and call this if you want as well. Usually it's written in line. Then the second thing that's different is you can return any value. You don't have to return uh, an array. So you can return an object. You can return a number. It just reduces everything down to one thing you're getting back in the end. And that's your second thing you pass into the reduce. So I'll do a comma here. And in this case, I'm going to pass a zero because I want it to start at zero and add everything up on top of that. The third superpower is that you can run checks inside this. We're not going to do that for this one right now. But for instance, we could check and say anything less than four, ignore or something like that. OK, so let's think through what we're going to do. Each time we loop through this, we're going to take the first and loop through this. At that point, we'll have access to the accumulated value, which started at zero because that was our initial value we passed in. Then we'll just do whatever we want to that value. In this case, this number, we're going to add it to our accumulated value. So it's as easy as returning inside of here. And you do need to return the accumulated value for it to get it, get access to it the next time around. So I'll take the accumulated value and I'm simply going to plus equals to it my num. So all I'm doing here is saying, hey, what I want is this accumulated value, which started at zero. And I want you to add my current number to it. Then take all of this and give it to the next loop. So now it starts at one and I'm two is my second number around. Then I'm going to take two and add it to, to that. So now I'll have three. And the third time around here, this will be three. And I'll have four as my number. So what it's going to do is just loop through it each and every time. And at the end, rather than getting an array, like I would have to get with a lot of other array methods, I can get a number. And that's exactly what I want, because that's how I started my whole value. And that's my end return statement. So when it runs out of things in its list, it's just going to spit out whatever the accumulated value is up to that point, which in this case would be whatever the, all that is added up together. So what I'm going to do is come in here and just do a double slash and a question mark and Quokka will actually print out the result right here. So it's 12. Now what we could do instead, if I wanted to, let's come inside here and I'm going to console.log. Uh, let's, let's do it in backticks here. So I'll do the ACC. We'll call this ACC, something like that. And then let's copy this down and we'll call this num. And I call it ACC because it's called the accumulator and it's usually called that when you look at documentation. Uh, so there we go. All right, so this is going to show us the first loop through, the second loop through, the third, and the fourth. And you can see why Quokka is so helpful here. So the very first time through this loop, I get access to my initial value. In this case, it's the zero because that's what I passed in. If I change this to something like 10, you can now see that it starts at 10. And then our final value starts at 17, which would give us uh, 10 more in the end. Let's move this back to zero. 
Hey there, this is Editing Chris. Sorry for the interruption. I realized that I forgot to mention that you don't technically have to pass in an initial value. Just know that if you don't, it'll actually use the first item in your array as the starting point, so as your accumulator starting value. Now that will have effects, like for instance, if you don't want to include something, it's already gonna be there. You won't be able to filter it out to start with because it is the initial value to start with. So just note that typically I always include an initial value. That way I have control over exactly where it starts, which is usually zero, an empty array or an empty object. All right, back to the video. And save it again and you can see here, first time around it's zero and I'm taking the number one and adding it to zero. Now, since I return it down here, this ACC, then I get that as my next value. Then I'm gonna add my next number to it right here, and then same thing around each time around. So let's add one more thing into this just to show you all three superpowers at once. What I can do is say something like, if uh, num is less than four, then all I wanna do is return my ACC. In other words, just give it to the next iteration and skip everything else in this loop. So if I do that, and I console.log this at the end, which I can do just like this with Coca, I now get nine because it's removed these two right here. So it's only adding up these final two. So in other words, rather than looping through this once with the filter and once with the map, now I'm just looping through this one time with the reduce and doing all my checks inside of here. So the three superpowers, again, that you get with reduce is number one, you get access to the current accumulated value. Number two, you can return any value, not just an array. So in this case, I'm returning a number, but we'll also return an object in a later example. And thirdly, you can run checks inside of reduce that act very much like a filter, so you only have to loop through things once rather than multiple times, one after the other. All right, so that example is fairly simple. Let's think through another use case where you might wanna use it. Let's say you've got an array of objects, each with a name and an age. And let's say as you look through here, you wanna count up how many people are age 21 or age 34 or age 18 or age 25. Now you could string a bunch of methods together or have an empty object that then you fill with things using a map, but it's much easier to use something like a reduce. So let's call this something like uh, counted people or something like that. And we'll take our people and we'll call the reduce method on it. Now, again, this takes two things. It takes a callback and then it's also gonna take an initial value. Now, last time we wanted a number at the end, this time we want an object. So I'm gonna do comma and an empty object. So that's my empty object we're gonna fill as we keep going through this reduce. Now, remember inside here, you get access to two things. The person, all right, that's the, the thing you're looping through. In this case, it would be an object, each of those objects. But first of all, you get access to the accumulator. And I'm just going to uh, type it again as ACC. And these do have to be in this order. This is the first option. This is the second option. Now, I'll just mention it here. There are actually two other options you can add here, an index. And you can also add the array itself. This will give you access to the index in this array. And it will also give you access to the entire array. I almost never use these. So I'm not going to go over those. But just so you know, you do have access to two more uh, parameters if you need them. Now let's think through what we want in the very end. Let me perhaps just come down here and type this out. So what we want in the end is we want an object that has something like 21 as a value. And in here it has a count. Like in this case, it would be one. It only has one uh, 21 aged person. Then I'd have 34 and this would be the same. It'll only be one. Then I would have 18 and I have 218. So that's what I want. So it's just like this the whole way down. All right, so a pretty basic example, but you could see how that would be difficult to accomplish with other methods. But with the reduce, it's super simple. And because I'm starting with an object, I can just check to see if a value exists on that object. If it doesn't, I can fill it. And if it does, I can just add to it, just like you would do with any kind of object. So the very first thing I'm always gonna do inside of reduce is return the ACC. This makes sure that the next time I loop through this, the next person loop has access to the accumulated value. And then in the end, it will make sure that it sends me this at the very end. Now we're gonna add some stuff to that in a second, but I always have to return that accumulated value to finally get what I want out of the reduce. So why don't we just identify the key and let's just call it key, all right? And this would be the uh, person, which is the thing I'm looping through, dot age. All right, so in that case, it would be 21 the very first time through. All right, now what I wanna do is check to see if that exists on the ACC. And if it does, I want its value. Now, this first time through, obviously it's not going to exist, but it could eventually if there were multiple people age 21. So we could call it something like uh, value if exists, all right, or whatever we want. And in this case, what I want is to grab the ACC, which again is an object, this is how it started. And I wanna check a key on that object. The key I wanna check is simply the uh, the key that I have right here. 
Now, if this doesn't exist, it's simply going to give me uh, like null or undefined. So in this case, if it doesn't exist, I just want it to give me zero because again, we're going to get a number at the very end. Now, there's a couple ways we could then return all of this and make sure that our ACC is updated, our accumulator is updated. But probably the easiest way is just to use the spread syntax and spread in into a new object. So we're copying the ACC to start with. Then what I want to do is hit comma, and I want to update just the key that I've got up here. So the easiest way to do that is just in bracketed syntax here, take that key and then say, here's the new value. And here's the value. I want to take the value if it exists. So it might be zero, it might be one, whatever it happens to be, I just want to add one to it. And because I've identified the key, I'll only add one if it happens to be on a loop with 21 or 34 or 18 or whatever it happens to be. So let's go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to come down here again and just comment, console log this out. And in this case, it's a little hard to see. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up uh, the Quokka uh, output down here. And you can see that what we're getting is I have two 18s, 121, two 25s, 132, and 134. Now let's just talk through this one more time to make sure that that makes sense. So the very first time I loop through this, my starting value is just an empty object. So when I loop through the very first time, I'm going to say, hey, let's grab a key. The key would be 21. And I want to ask, does this exist? All right, if it exists at this spot, then give me its value. So it's going to actually not give me the key. It'll give me whatever the value is in this object. Now it's not going to exist the very first time through. So it's going to give me a zero. Then what I'm going to do is say, let's take a copy of the ACC and return that as a new object. I'm going to update one property or one key value pair there. I'm going to take the key, which happens to be 21, and I'm going to give it its value. Now, since it started at zero, I'm adding one to it, which means I start with just one. And that ends up being the end result in the very end as well. And I'll pass all that on as the new ACC to the next one. So when I come over here to H34 and Bob, I'm going to come here and grab that H34 as the key and ask, hey, is there a value already in that ACC object that has the key of uh, 34? Not a value. Is there a key value pair? All right. That has 34 as the key with any value. If it does, give me a value. Now, in this case, it doesn't. So it's going to give me zero and the same thing happens. It passes all of that along. Now it has two things in it. It has 18 or it has 21, 1 and 34, 1 in it. This is what the ACC has at the third loop around. Well, the third loop around, I've got 18, and it, it does the same thing. But eventually, I'm going to get to this next 18, and at that time, it's going to check if the value exists, and it does, and it is equal to 1 at that point, which means it doesn't have to go to this OR statement. So at that point, it's going to take my 1 and add 1 to it, which is why I eventually get 2 over here for 18. So hopefully that makes sense. Now again, you can do other things like filter directly within here. So what I could do is say, like, uh, I don't know, if if uh, key is less than 25, then just return the current ACC. All right, so I'm not going to update any values on it. And you can see that that's what it's going to do. And it's going to give me only those three values. Now, we could also change this up a little bit more. Let's say that we don't want to add up these values, but instead we want to list the names of the people. Well, in this case, I don't want a, a zero. What I actually want is an empty array the very first time. So if I don't have anything there yet, give me an empty array and I can add things to that array. And in that case, what I would do for my value is come in here and spread in my value if it exists. So like the first time it would be Alice. And the next time, if I had another 21 person, that would already exist. And I just want to add on to that whatever my person dot name is. And you can see when I do that, that in this case, the value ends up being an array with whatever people are aged 18 or 21 or whatever. Now, when I hover over this output by Quokka, or I should say it could be Quokka, I don't really know. So I'm sorry if I'm butchering that, but you can see the pop-up over here on the left actually also shows me the breakdown of how that looks in the end. Now, again, you might be able to imagine how you could do this with like pushing and adding things to an empty object with a map, but this is way more efficient with something like a reduce. And of course, we could compress this even a little bit more by like removing this right here and just replacing this and this with that. So in two lines, we're getting this pretty complex output with uh, just a simple reduce. All right, let's go through one final example. In this case, I have a list of comments. These are all inside of an object, and each object has an ID as the key, an ID for the comment, and then all this text, user ID, and rating. Let's come down here, and let's say I want to see everybody with user ID 3. I want to see all of their comments. So I've got one here, one here, and one here. I think that might be it. No, I've got four by user, by user three. All right, so let's come down here and let's say something like uh, group by a user ID. All right, so I want to group the comments by user ID. In the very end, here's what I want it to look like. I want it to be an object. 
all right, which is helpful because I can do that with a reduce. I also want it to be where the user ID right here is the key, and then the value is an array of all their comments, all right? So whatever they said here over and over again, all right? So I want to group them like that. Now, again, you might be able to imagine how to do this with something like mapping over it, and but that would be way too complex. And with a reduce, it's pretty easy. So I'm going to take my comments, and I'm going to reduce right here. Remember, this takes two things. First of all, an arrow function, and then an initial value. Now, what, I want, what do I want this to be like in the end? I want it to be an object. So let's start with an empty object that we're essentially adding items to as we loop through each of the items in my comments object. Now we're gonna have two things. We're gonna have the accumulated value and then the current comment. So let's just call this comment. And now you, you might be thinking, wait a second, this is not an array, this is an object. And you would be right. So what I need to do is come in here and say object dot uh, values and then pass in the comments and then reduce off that because this will get me uh, an array. All right, so now that I have all that, we always want to first of all return uh, return the ACC. That way at the very end, we get access to it, and all along the way, we get access to this ACC as well. Now let's think through what I want. I want the key to be the user ID, so we could do something very similar to what we did above. So I could say const uh, key equals uh, comment dot user ID, right? So now I've got that key, and I just want to check to see if that currently exists. So again, I could say something like value if exists, or I could say value either way, because it doesn't really, if it doesn't exist, I'm going to provide it a value. And in this case, what do I want? Well, why don't you pause the video and try to figure this out and then play it again once you're ready. All right, well, hopefully you got it first time, no problem. Well, what I want to do is check to see if on the object ACC, all right, remember this is the thing we started with, if a certain key exists. What key is that? Well, it's my key, all right? If it does exist, it should give me that value. If it doesn't exist, I want to provide my own value. And since I want these values to all be arrays, I'm going to start with an empty array that we can add to as we loop through it. Then what I'm going to do is come in here and spread in my ACC. So I'm taking a copy of my current accumulated value and I want to update just one value on that. The value I want to update is my key. There's the key. The value itself is going to be an array where I spread in the current value, which might be just an empty array being spread into an empty array, which is still an empty array. <laughs> and then what I want to do is tack onto the end of that the text. So that would be my comment dot text. And if I save it, and if I did that correctly, I can come in here like this, and I should see an object with a bunch of key value pairs where the key is the user ID and the array is a list of all the comments they have as strings. So one more time, the superpowers that Reduce has is you can return any single value you want. So it can be an object, an array, a number, whatever. Number two, each loop you also get access to the accumulated value as you get going. Thirdly, you can filter within this. So perhaps in a real life example, you might say, hey, when a user shows up on their dashboard, I want them to be able to see all of their comments. Well, the easiest way perhaps to do that and to list it out just like I have there is to do a filter, but then you have access to a whole object of everything about that comment. Maybe you just want the text itself. Well, that's where a reduce could come in. And maybe you'd write up a function. Maybe you'd call it something like get uh, user comments. All right, and in this case, what you might take in is like a user ID. Now what we could do is take all of this right here, and I could just return right here, return all of this, and then I could run a filter directly inside of here. So I could say like, if uh, key does not equal my user ID, then simply return the ACC. Now the other thing here I'd want to change up is right here. I just want this to be an empty array. Since it's not an object, I don't need to check to see if a certain key exists. Instead, what I can do is simply spread it into an array because again, at this point, I want an array back like this, an ACC. And then I'll also want to add my comment.txt. Now, if I've done all that correctly, what I can do is come right down here and I can just call that function right here and I can pass in something like one. Now you can see if I did that correctly, I'm getting an array back of just the strings. Now imagine if you had a bunch of other properties on these objects, it's really useful to get back just what you want and no more than that. Now with something like this, you could also use a map and a filter, but now I've combined those to where I'm only looping through these objects once. Imagine if you had thousands of comments, how much cheaper that action would be than looping through everything two times with a filter and then a map. Well, I hope this explanation was a super big help to you in understanding how Reduce works. It was for me working through it, and I hope to have shared that with you. Now, how can you enter to win these Quoka licenses? Well, it actually is going to require a little bit of generosity on your part as well. So if I come over this way, uh, this personal pro license is what I've got. I've got four of them, and I'm giving it to people who give to a fundraiser. 
Now, this isn't like any private fundraiser. It's something really special. It's for a children's cancer research hospital. And it's with a, a podcast partner that I really enjoy called Relay FM. They have a fundraising goal set up right now where they're trying to raise nearly a half million dollars. I wanted to participate with this, and they found a way to actually let people set up their own fundraising to kind of help along with their goal. So what you're doing is giving to a cancer research hospital. And if you give as little as $1, you'll be entered to win these Quoka or Quaka licenses. Now, there are some important rules. And first, you have to give through the link I give in the description, which is my personal campaign. For every dollar you give, you get one raffle ticket to enter into this drawing. On October 1st, 2022, I'll select two random winners for a Quoka JS license to be redeemed free of charge. And again, they're $55 normally. The more you give, obviously, the better chance you have of winning. So to enter the giveaway, you have to give at least $1 to the campaign, and that's fine. If you give just a dollar, that's a dollar more to helping defeat childhood cancer. If you give $10, you get 10 entries. If you give 100, you get 100 entries. You get it. Now, to make sure I can actually contact you, I then need you to send me a copy of your giving receipt to chris at codinginpublic.dev. That's my email address. And on October 1st, 2022, I'll contact four winners, not two. I just forgot that they... When they heard about this, they wanted to give me two additional ones. So now I have four to give away, which is even better for you. So would you join me in giving towards this really amazing cause? And in the meantime, you could win one of these Quoka licenses yourself. Thanks so much to Quoka for sponsoring this video and partnering with me to see how we might be able to impact this great cause. Hey, well, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was a big help. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.